Hello again, welcome back. In our previous lecture, we talked about information and what information is, and we're going to continue with that discussion today and talk about some encodings. Okay, but first of all, I want to remind you that we said, how would you measure information? Well, typically you measure it in terms of bits, but actually, this may seem a little surprising, but the term bit has two different distinct meanings, and you don't want to confuse the two. Bit actually is short for binary digit. And a binary digit is a discrete thing. It's either a zero or a one. On the other hand, when we're measuring the content of a message, the information content of a message, what we're measuring is a continuous quantity. And we're going to call that bits also. But it, it, uh, and it's related to the, other, to the other definition of bit. But it's slightly different. It's a measure of information content. And it's a continuous. OK? So in general, what's the best way to transmit a message? Well, it's to use the least number of bits in that second sense uh, if you average that over the number of messages that you send. OK, so let's think about this. Suppose that we had a language that had four, or excuse me, uh, 16 possible messages. So we can think of those as being symbols in the language. And uh, we've got 16 of them, so it's pretty easy to figure out how you might encode that. Just use four bits for each one and just number them from 0 to 15 and use the binary representation of that. And we want to use the binary representation that has four bits so that we won't have any ambiguities, right? So we'll just number them from 0, 0, 0, 1 all the way up to 1, 1, 1, 1, OK? And we're going to call this the naive encoding. Now, it's not naive in the sense of being bad or stupid. It's just naive in the sense that it's simple. We don't have to think about it. If you've got 16 possibilities, you just number them you know, from, one, from 0 to 15 and use the binary representation with appropriate number of bits to cover that space. Okay? Now, the question is, if we're sending a message in this language that is one of these 16 possibilities, can we do better than this, than this encoding? And the answer is, if you're only sending one message, Assuming that all of, the, all of the possibilities are live, that is, that you really could have any one of these 16 possibilities, then you really can't do any better than this. You might as well just send four bits. But on the other hand, if we're going to send a bunch of these messages, can we do any better in that context? And the answer is maybe yes, and we'll investigate that. OK, so imagine that in this language we're sending a thousand of these messages across some communication channel, right? Remember our, our paradigm is we have a sender and a receiver. So the sender is going to send a thousand of these messages to the receiver, and he wants to do that as efficiently as possible. Well, imagine also that uh, one of these messages, say message 10, is much more likely than all of the others. So uh, consider the following scenario. The sender is in a room, and he's running a machine to stamp out widgets, for example. And uh, he wants to send a log of the results to the receiver. And, and so most of the time, the machine runs OK. And so he's, he's writing down OK, 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 OK. Uh, but every once in a while, you know, something goes wrong, and one of 15 possible errors happens. And so he wants to record that. So error number 12 happened. And then you know, at, the, at the 700th run, error number uh, 5 happened. OK, so he's going to send the results of these experiments across this channel. Now, um, OK, so we've, we've, we've said that we could use the naive encoding, right? because we have 16 possibilities. Either it's right or one of these 15 errors. And so we could use four bits for each one and send 4,000 bits across the channel. It works. But presumably, we can do better. And uh, because we know that one of these messages is much more likely, why not encode that one very efficiently and use a few more bits for the other possibilities? Let's see how that might go. All right, so, so here's an encoding, right? We, you notice we, we've encoded message 10 very efficiently. We gave it a 0. And all of the other messages, we just used the, our standard binary encoding, but we added a 1 onto the front. So how would this work if you were receiving these things? Well, you look at the first bit, and if it's a 0, you write down message 10 and go on to the next one. And if it's a 1, then you look at the next four bits to tell you which of the 15 error possibilities it is. So this is 
uh, a unique encoding for this thing, and we can always recover the sequence of, of experiments. Okay, is it any better than the naive encoding? Well, uh, remember the assumption that 99.5% of the time we're getting message 10, that is the machine is behaving correctly. So what, what's going on? Well, that means out of a thousand messages, on average, we're going to have 995 of them being message 10, and we're going to have only five of them, which are the error messages. So in our new encoding, we use for those 995 good guys, we use 995 bits. For each of the other five, we use it in five bits in each case, which is 25 bits. So that means to send these 1,000 messages, we used 1,020 bits, or on average, 1.02 bits per message. That's a pretty good improvement, given that our naive encoding was going to use four bits per message. Okay, so let's make some observations. The encoding that we came up with was quite a bit better than the naive encoding. And so the question that you might ask is, is it the best that you can do? And in particular, is there a limit to how well you can do? And we'll, we'll investigate that later. Computing the number of bits per message on average, in this case, depending on us knowing the prior probabilities of messages in this language. And we don't always know that. Uh, the on average part, you notice, is important because it might be that the machine was just broken and every message was an error message. And in that case, you'd have a thousand times five or 5,000 bits. And so you'd actually do worse in that case than the naive encoding, right? We, we've used the naive encoding sort of as our benchmark, you know, because it's simple and straightforward and clear what that encoding is. But that's not the worst possible encoding. You can always make it worse. I mean, you can just throw in random junk for any encoding. And so there may be a lower limit for your encoding efficiency, but there's certainly not an upper limit. And then finally, we ask the question, is it possible to find an optimal encoding? And what would that even mean? Well, it would have to mean that it's the best encoding that we could possibly have for this language. And we'll, we'll see whether we can do that a little later. OK, so what did we learn? Well, we talked about two different meanings of bit. Binary digit, which is a discrete thing, and a measure of, uh, of information content, which is a continuous quantity. We've said that for any language, certainly for any uh, artificial language like this, but even for a natural language, you can come up with an encoding that works. But the question is, is it the best encoding that you could have? And what does it mean to do better in this case? It means using fewer bits on average per symbol in the language as we transmit them. Thank you.